Let's get into it now. A spoiler-free review of Dune Part 2, a movie that had so much hype built around it. Again, I don't go read reviews. I don't listen to reviews going into a movie. But it was hard to avoid all of the tweets and people posting in their stories of how much they loved it. But that's where I stopped going into it. But I knew that there was going to be more action in this one, just given the trailer, given what the director, Denis Villeneuve, who said that the first one was essentially setting up all the big action in the second one. And I was not a fan of Dune Part 1. Quite frankly, I found that movie to be very boring. It was a lot of walking in the sand. It felt like Game of Thrones in the desert to me, trying to build this big, elaborate world in just one film for me, felt like too big of a task. So I wasn't that big a fan of it. I didn't hate it by any means because I still think visually it looked amazing. And the action that we did have towards the end of the movie had me excited going into this one. And really, I just wanted to see Timothy Chalamet ride a worm. I was all in it for that. And this movie has an incredible cast with Timothy Chalamet, Zendaya, Josh Brolin, Austin Butler, who did a really good job in this movie. They brought in Florence Pugh, Dave Bautista, who is proving that he can really do it all. And I love that he takes on every single role with so much just charisma and power, and he can do so many different things. And for I know I compare him to The Rock a lot because they both came from the WWE, but The Rock will only do movies where he is the star. Dave Bautista will do roles in a big movie like this as a supporting actor and completely crush it, which I think is a great, great value to you as an actor. You don't have to be the star every time, and for that reason, I think he is winning in the game of WWE wrestlers turned actors. You also have Christopher Walken, Javier Bardem, which seeing him and Josh Brolin in a movie together gave me No Country for Old Men vibes. So I love the cast. I love the director, Denis Villeneuve, who has done movies like Blade Runner 2049, Sicario, and of course he did part one. So he is somebody who has a really big grasp on doing big action movies, big sci-fi movies. He also finds great cinematographers to make his vision come to life. Greg Frazier in this movie crushed it. And that is where I want to start, is the visual aspect of this movie. That first action sequence had me on my toes. And there were these really slick movements that were definite upgrades from part one. That led me to believe that this movie was going to have so much more action and have a completely different profile than Dune Part 1. Leading me to believe that the director wasn't lying and this is where all the action is going to be. So there are so many great things I can say about how good this movie looked visually. And I think where it really shined was the action. It had such beautiful explosions. I'm not sure I've ever described an explosion as being beautiful, but there were these big bursts of flames and you combine it with the unique sound design that this movie had, that it had the theater rumbling. And this is a movie that even if you're not the biggest fan of the franchise or the characters or the story, it still demands the big screen because of the scale of the sets, because of the scale of the action. And this is a very, very cinematic movie that I think seeing it in theaters is the only way to see it. But that being said, I don't think this movie is for everybody. And this is coming from me who, as a self-proclaimed nerd, I tell people that I'm into sci-fi. But this movie has me questioning whether or not I'm into this type of sci-fi. I think there are two different levels of nerds. One that's a little bit more fun, lighthearted, still nerdy stuff. And there's this more like refined, hardcore nerddom. The way I describe my nerd friends is I have some who are more into Star Wars and I have some that are more into Star Trek. If you are more into Star Wars, you might not be the biggest fan of Dune. If you're more into Star Trek, you probably love it. And I know what the comments are going to say is that Dune was essentially ripped off by Star Wars, which is a little bit more of a digestible, family-friendly, appeals-to-kids version of Dune. The book came out before the first Star Wars movie, so George Lucas pulled a lot of inspiration from Dune, and you can see that. So, when I sit down to watch a sci-fi movie, a movie like Dune is one that I kind of need to spend more time with. And I know after watching this movie, it was by no means bad I just feel like it's not entirely for me. I have trouble connecting with the characters and the themes in this movie 
which there are very big complex themes. What it is about essentially is Timothy Chalamet's character trying to seek revenge against the people who destroyed his family. He teams up with Zendaya and her crew and they are going into war defeating these enemies. And the overarching theme is him having to choose between the love of his life and the fate of the universe. He's having these visions of what is going to happen in the future. And then there's this other big theme that has a lot of religious undertones about what it means to have a Messiah, what it means to be waiting for a person who is said to, you know, guide you, be your beacon, be the person you are going to follow. Those religious undertones, but really it is a story about good and evil with Timothy Chalamet being the hero. Austin Butler and Dave Bautista being the villains here. And while I understand this, and I can already read the comments again of people saying, well, you just didn't get it. I understand all that. But the level of storytelling that it has, even though I'm understanding these plot points and following along all these characters, which it does take a lot of paying attention. This is a movie you really have to be dialed into because if you miss one line, if you miss one little part, you may be confused throughout the movie even if you understand all the plot points, for me anyway, I had trouble connecting with the characters and really feeling the things that I normally feel in a movie of this scale. And that was even with this one having a little bit more levity to it with Javier Bardem's character cracking some jokes here and there. There was a little bit more camaraderie, people poking fun at Timothy Chalamet. This one had a lot more of those elements that lacked in the first one. But it always comes back to that connection between the spice and the moisture that is so specialized to me that I don't really care about it. And that's probably my dumb brain of not wanting to grasp that concept or think it's that interesting that I'm like, they're doing this all because of spice and moisture. So I was just trying to visualize exactly where this is taking place in the world and allow myself to fully be a part of that world. But there were things throughout that just took me out of it. And as much as I love Timothy Chalamet, maybe it's because I was coming off Wonka. It was, I found it hard for me, probably unfairly, that he is the person for this role. And maybe it's just because of the way he talks. To me, he just sounded like Timmy Tim delivering some of these speeches and talking so just normally when everybody around him has a cool accent they're speaking a different language which his character did too but I just found it to be like oh it's just Timothy Chalamet in there so I think this is a movie in about five years much like I did with Interstellar that I didn't love the first time I saw it in theaters but years later after revisiting it learning more about it researching more about it I understand that film and what it was trying to do and what it was trying to say. Same case will probably be here, and I'll look back and think, ah, I really got this review wrong upon my first reactions, but I couldn't come on here and tell you that I completely loved all of the storytelling elements and that I'm fully into Dune because I didn't really leave with that impression. In those first 90 minutes, if it would have ended there, I'd have came on here and given it a 4.5 out of 5. But after about that 90 minute mark towards the back half of Act 2 into Act 3, it got Dooney again. And by Dooney again, I mean it got a little bit boring. The dialogue started to feel a little bit more like a chore. And when all of these big epic moments start happening, I don't have that connection with these characters to really make me get riled up in my seat and want to cheer along. And maybe it's because my brain has been ruined by the MCU of expecting some witty catchphrase or some big heroic moment for something to pop to get me excited. I just didn't really have that feeling. And once it was over, I thought it went on probably 20 to 25 minutes too long. Probably unfair for me to say that hey, if it just made it shorter, it would have been better. But when it started to dip for me, it dipped pretty hard and I just kind of wanted it to be over. But I just know that there is such a big fandom for this movie of people who truly get it. Because if you look at the box office numbers in the United States, it made $81.5 million worldwide. It's almost $180 million. So the fandom is there. I just think there are two different kinds of nerds. Again, the more refined nerds who are going to love this. People who like sci-fi with big complex themes, a lot of characters, different languages. If you're more into like reading a book and then going to see the movie, this is all for you. But if you're like me, that usually gets more invested in the emotional side of things. 
likes a little bit more action throughout the entire movie and not just a lot of dialogue of people speaking in these weird chambers, then you might find it to be a little bit boring and tedious at times. The one thing I think we can all agree upon is that cinematically, it is unmatched. This is how you do special effects. All of the action sequences were magnificent. Seeing Zendaya shoot these amazing guns, seeing all of the choppers, those little things that they would use to attract all of the worms. So the action and the visual aspect are amazing. So I still think you will enjoy that even if you don't enjoy the other themes. So for Dune Part 2, I give it 3.5 out of 5 sandworms.